and I heard today it's blanketed in white snow across most of the country. So cold Saturday uh, afternoon there uh, in New Zealand. But I understand also everyone are grouping together to watch these games. Uh, I heard the uh, Mount Albert, Mount Albert. Auckland Ramblers team uh, club has got their big screen going. So to you at the Ramblers, thank you for tuning in. And I hope you've got a beverage ready to go and you strap yourselves in. This is going to be a beauty. For those watching across Canada, of course, it's late on the East Coast, 10 p.m. in Ontario. A little later, if you push to Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. And in New Zealand, it's 2 p.m. Australia noon. So some great afternoon ball in the Pacific. So we are ready to go. Nick Shales coming to the plate here, the third baseman, and touted as one of the, if not the best hitter in the game. Yeah, exactly. He's the identical opposite to, uh, sorry, the identical to Ben Anoka for the New Zealand team. He comes in with a 554 batting average, four home runs, seven RBIs, six walks, on base percentage, 667. When we go, first pitch inside for a ball from Josh Pettit. Talking with Lance Wynn before the game, Chopper, an interesting setup. You can pitch around Shales, but he's a leadoff guy, and you're going to put the leadoff guy on if you don't, you know, if you pitch around him. Well, what you don't want is you don't want him to hit a home run here because that will ignite the Australian team. Hot shot to Bartarillo, and Shales is erased on the 5-3. So that will take care of that conversation and bring to the plate James Todd Hunter, the shortstop. Yeah, Shales reaching over, driving that drop ball hard down the line, but safely behind it, Bartarillo tossing it over to first for the first out of this ball game. Defense so key in this game. You have to be quick, not only in determining on how to collect the ball, but getting rid of it as a lot of speed down the line. So Todd Hunter waits for Pettit's delivery. And that will come in for a strike, according to Peter Klasinski. Yeah, Todd Hunter, he's an experienced campaigner. As I look down to the batter's box, he's using every little inch with his back foot there, uh, getting all the way deep in there to give himself the most amount of time to get onto Pettit. Second pitch on the at-bat, sails a little high. Looking at the defense for New Zealand, playing pretty much straight away, not worried about a bunt at this point. We've seen in some earlier games some of the teams trying to bunt their way on. That's fouled off, and Kirkpatrick calmly just lifts the one leg to get out of the way of the ball. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you may not have seen that image on the screen, but I tell you, Coach Langhara would have been holding his breath because his top pitcher performing this week almost got lined on that uh, foul ball. Playing first base in the lineup is uh, Andrew Kirkpatrick. He'll, he's on deck to bat third. He's such a threat, Kirkpatrick. You know, he can play pitch, first base, and he hits in the three hole. Todd Hunter now with the one and two count. Pettit with the pitch, and that's a flare into right field. Laulu coming in. Oh, and they can't make the catch. Evans was going out for s from second, and Laulu coming in from right. And that was a lob that landed just in the perfect spot. Yeah, Texas leaguer over the top of Evans here, and Evans didn't get a good jump on it. He hustled to try and get back. He got a glove to it, but it was way over his head and way over his shoulder, and he, was, he did well to get his glove to it. But in this case, dropping it down there in Australia, get a, a runner on second base critically here in the first innings. So Andrew Kirkpatrick comes up to bat now from the left-hand side. Comes in for a strike. So runner in scoring position for New, uh, for Australia early on against New Zealand. For those who may not have seen Josh Pettit, he's a tall right-handed pitcher from Wellington, New Zealand. He throws hard from the uh, Johnsonville club down there. Drop ball is his MO, so you use that extensively. But when he uses a rise ball, that can pop as well. So it is a double credited to Todd Hunter on that flare to right field. And as throughout this official championship run all week long, there are official scorekeepers at each game. That's where we get our information. A little dribbler to the second baseman, Evans, over to Nukunuku for the second out of the inning. But Todd Hunter ends up at third. Yeah, Evans, nice makeup play there, charging that uh, dribbler and doing the exact right thing. Not just choosing to throw overhand, but shoveling it over to Nukunuku for the second out of the innings. Lewis Weldon, the DP 
for this game in the fourth cleanup spot, and this is the part of the order that Australia would like to see kick up a gear. Yeah, well, Lewis Weldon played the offseason in uh, New Zealand this year for the Roosters Club on the North Shore, and he proved his worth for the Australian team in the TAB Challenge, TAB Challenge in February, hitting home run after home run after home run. And he deserves to be in this spot at the moment. He's hitting 357. He would have liked to have more home zones this week, but he does have power in that bat. Todd Hunter at third base, speed there, and slapped to the Australian dugout side for a foul ball. We've had quite the day so far in the first day of playoffs. Canada coming up big against Japan, 2 to nothing. That game just preceding this one. The nightcap here in a beautiful setting in Whitehorse, Yukon. And that'll sail in for a strike. Weldon just tipping back a little bit as it curved over the plate. So now down 1-2. One, one of the things with uh, Pettit, which is a little bit deceiving, is drop ball has been both ways. And uh, when you have that as a drop ball pitcher, that can be really advantageous. Swing and a miss as Pettit leaves the runner at third base. So New Zealand able to get a double, and he's moved over to third but stranded. And New Zealand, first crack at the bats coming up in the bottom of the first. More coming up on Sports Canada TV. To the bottom of the first we go, and New Zealand coming up to the plate. They'll be led off by the center fielder, Campbell Anoka. Second baseman, Joel Evans, batting second. Nathan Nukunuku, the first baseman in that third slot. The designated player is Brad Brona, batting fourth. Thomas Anoka batting fifth, the left fielder. Cole Evans, the shortstop, batting sixth. Wayne Laulu, the right fielder, batting seventh. Callan Campaign, the catcher, batting eighth. And it's Tyrone Botarillo batting ninth, the third baseman. Yeah, for New Zealand here, their, their uh, approach to this game, uh, uh, Folkard, I've seen many, many times. He throws a very heavy ball. He's a very fast pitcher. He leaps a long way down the track. He predominantly throws a drop ball, but when he throws a rise ball right around the letters in the uniform, that's the one you've got to lay off. And it took New Zealand a few years to learn that, and uh, I wouldn't expect them to be doing that today. Campbell Anoka settling in the defensive setup for Australia. Behind Adam Fulkert, Mark Harris in left field, Ryan Sinclair in center, Ryan Merriman in right, Nick Shales the third baseman, James Todd Hunter at short as Fulkert delivers a first pitch strike. Brendan O'Byrne is the second baseman, Andrew Kirkpatrick at first, Nick Norton does the catching, and of course Adam Fulkert just concentrating on pitching with Lewis Weldon as the DP. And slap to the shortstop, Todd Hunter over to first, then they get the speedy Anoka, First out of the inning. Fine play by Todd Hunter there and a, a dribbler out to him from uh, Campbell in Noka. Uh, he didn't seem to rush that Todd Hunter, but what he did do is he made a quick transfer with a steady throw to first base to record the first out of the innings. Joel Evans, the second baseman, now standing in to face Fulkert. A little high for ball number one. Yeah, Joel Evans uh, from the Hutt Valley Softball Association and a great stalwart of Running bunt attempt there, but pulled the bat back immediately. Yeah, I think New Zealand are going to use all sorts of tricks here today to get on top of Folkart early. 2-0 pitch. Slapped by Kirkpatrick into right field, and New Zealand has its first hit of the evening. Yeah, nice bit of professional hitting there from Evans. The ball on the outside of the zone. Deciding not to try and pull that ball, but actually going with it. Drove it hard through the uh, hole between first base and second. Straight out to the outfield, trotting down to first. Nathan Nukunuku, the first baseman, steps up to the plate. 
Nathan Nukunuku is the captain of this team. He's in his sixth World Cup for New Zealand, tying the record with Rona and uh, Kevin Hurley. He, and he is the leader. 636 is his batting average. He is on fire right now. Keep an eye on Evans at first. And Nick Norton pouncing up right away, looking the runner back to first base. This is a great example of New Zealand's mentality. There are no egos in this team, even though Nathan's the hottest hitter in this tournament at the moment. With all those uh, home runs and nine RBIs, he's more than happy to get Evans over to two. Nuka Nuka pulls the bat back as that sails in high. We got an update from Diamond 2 as Dominican shuts out Denmark 6-0. So Dominican will keep rolling along in the consolation pool. Nukunuku with the 1-1 count. And that's low Norton up, ready to throw. Nobody's watching first as Kirkpatrick and Shales are being pulled in with the bunt attempts. Yeah, bunt there would have caused trouble, of course. Just notice the left fielder for Australia, Mark Harris, is deep here respecting uh, Nukunuku's power. So any slap over the shortstop's going to land for sure. Nice play by Norton, and uh, back is Evans just in time. Norton didn't pick the uh, ball up cleanly, and Evans tried to take advantage, but good, quick, cat-like reflexes from the Australian catcher. Yeah, exactly, and he needed to be because New Zealand will jump on any possible uh, opportunity that arises in this game and they will force the throw like they did there they forced two throws in that situation you'll see a lot of that in this game so fixing up a little bit of a hole there on the field after Evans was digging in to get back and now the three and one look on Nuka Nuku and that's a strike as the batter checks with the home plate umpire. Good communication between the umpires and players. They'll check once in a while. Was that there? Yes, it was. Three and two delivery. Swing and a foul off. Spoils that rise ball. Yeah, that's the pitch that's hard to handle. And look and look and lucky to get a piece of that action because Falkov, when he gets that rise ball up around the letters, it's almost unhittable. So the one-out single, Evans sitting at first still. And change-up is going to be a strike, and Nuka is going to be punched out. Caught looking for the second out of the inning. Brad Rona's going to be the next batter. Question for you here in this situation. Both teams have played some really good teams, and they have faced some teams that need some work. How does that affect a team going through a tournament? Yeah, I think that ball, they would have all parked that by now. And uh, round robin was round robin's playoff time, and both teams would be ready for the real action. All right, two away with Brad Rona, the DP, celebrating his 100th game with the New Zealand Black Sox. Yeah, true tests. They were 100. He's up to something like 142 matches, actually, for the New Zealand team. That sails in low for a ball. Evans with a dummy steal there, looking to force some action from the catcher, Norton. Brad, Two and one now. Yeah, Brad Rohn is a great exponent of discipline, ladies and gentlemen. If you've never seen him bad, he won't swing at anything outside the strike zone. He, he's earned that strike zone from 16 or 17 years of playing for the Black Sox. Two and one pitch coming in. A little bit taken off there and just missed on the outside. Pinpoint placement these pitchers have and sometimes the catcher's just setting out a little outside or inside trying to draw that call. Both Nukunuku and Rona getting into 3-1 counts here, so putting plenty of pressure on Falk out early. Nick Norton... Looking at the balls from the umpire, selecting the best out of the bunch, and now a little discussion with Kirkpatrick trying to break down the situation or just saying throw it by him. Two away here in this inning, runner on first, 3 2 count on the big stick. And that gets away from Fulkert and Rona on with a walk. Evans goes to second, and that's going to bring up Thomas Anoka, the left field. 
Yeah, Brode Rona there with another walk. He picked up three in the ball game yesterday. So that's four walks in a row. And uh, he got one to hit the pitch before that. He shot into the car park. And hopefully our rental car is safe. Scary when you get to this level on both sides as uh, the team from Hong Kong enjoying the game here. They're going to be in action tomorrow morning against the Czech Republic in a must-win-or-go-home game in the consolation pool. Thomas Anoka up at the plate now. And will take a strike. It's amazing, as I was saying, when you get to this level that on both sides, both teams with so much power and skill. I mean, when you have Botterillo as your ninth hitter in the New Zealand lineup, he's only hit five home runs this tournament. Uh, for Australia, again, up and down, you can look at the dangerous situations. There is no rest in this New Zealand lineup for a pitcher of any caliber, let alone being the world's best in Folkard. So right here with having uh, Noka up to bat and himself just lighting it up with a grand slam yesterday. He's picked up 11 RBIs. Mark Sorensen would love him to pick up a couple more right here. There's the delivery that's going to be poked to right field, and that's going to drop. Two runs are going to score, and... In comes Anoka to third base as Ryan Merriman trying to converge on the ball with Brendan O'Byrne, but that ball slicing away for the right fielder. And New Zealand has taken a 2-0 lead. And they've got a runner at third. Steve, another great uh, example of professional hitting there from the Black Sox. Just like Evans, taking that outside ball and dispatching it that way. So did Anoka there, dropping it in like a Texas leaguer, just inside the line and allowing New Zealand to get on the board here. Cole Evans, number 47, up to bat right now for New Zealand. And it should be a... Oh, I'm sorry, Brad Rona was held up at third. Yep. So he hasn't uh, come across the plate yet. It's one nothing. Yeah, Rona going all the way from first base. Big ass to come home on that type of hit for him. Sorensen doing the coaching and holding up the big man. Yeah, one of the surprises of the batting lineup here, the strategy from Sorensen, moving Cole Evans from the ninth spot to the sixth spot here and moving Wayne Laulu down a spot. So a surprise there coming to the ballpark and seeing that one. So 2-0, and oh, pitch comes in, and Evans holds up on the delivery. So it's Thomas Anoka at second, Brad Rona at third, and now the catcher going out to talk with his pitcher. Yeah, you want to get the strategy right. He's not happy. This is the third Black Sox hitter that he's got into a 3-1. Sorry, 3-0 and oh count. My apologies. But Cole Evans, one of the reasons I think he's bumped up in the order, he's hitting 385. He's got pop with two home runs, eight RBIs, and six walks. So he's having a good tournament in the batter's box. Folkert with the delivery comes in and pumps in a strike. We've got some activity in the Australian bullpen, and that looks like Harrison Peters it, warming up. It sure is, and Harrison Peters has been on fire for Australia, and obviously with Folkard, sorry, with Kirkpatrick at first base, he can't warm up in that location. There's a pop-up, and that could fall in no man's land. No, it's going to sail into the glove of the center fielder, Ryan Sinclair. So, the Thomas Anoka double drives in Joel Evans, but then Folkert strands runners at second and third. It is a 1-0 lead for New Zealand here as we head to the top of the second. More to come on Sports Canada TV. Going to the top of the second inning, Australia will send Ryan Merriman, Nick Norton, and Mark Harris to the plate, the number five, six, and seven hitters. 
find themselves down by a run here as Josh Pettit will get back to work. Well, Australia want to answer right back here, Steve. It's really important when you give up a run to score one, especially on these contests. And uh, no one better for Australia right now is Ryan Berryman. He's hitting 500 this week. So he's a hot stick and a perfect situation for Australia. Merriman bats from the right side, as you can see. And James Todd Hunter able to hit a double off Pettit back in the first inning, but was stranded at third after they moved him over. First pitch of the bat is just a little high for ball number one. Yeah, Merriman doing a good job there and being disciplined at the plate. Just what they need and lead off hitter in this situation. Works it right down the chute for strike one. Pettit, calm and cool. You don't see a whole lot of facial uh, expressions from him. From what I've seen throughout the week. And there's a shot. Deep center field. Will it stay? Yes, camped under it is Campbell Anoka. And the ball just hung in the air. Merriman just missing a deep drive. Yeah, not far off it at all, but you know, with the power of Pettit on the outside there, trying to generate some of that, and, and Merriman needed to go just a little bit more to his right off field of that, and he, he may have got enough distance to allow that to sail out of the park. There is no wind here today. It's nice and still. The weather is overcast-ish. No rain. Packed house. Can't get any better. Nick Norton up to the plate now. The catcher for Australia was well, pretty busy there in the Bottom half of the first inning. Our viewpoint is down the third base line, so we have a number of New Zealand fans in front of us, Australian fans packing that first base line grandstand with their flags out. Green and gold inflatable kangaroos. Still looking for one for my collection. Kangaroo? A kangaroo. Uh huh. Good on you, man. You want to take a bit of everyone, right? Absolutely. That's why you're here at a world tournament. Get a little taste of everybody's international flair. Might not want to eat kangaroo, though, bud. <laughs> Two and one pitch hits the catcher, and he kicks it down the first baseline. He'll take a walk. And Norton on base here with Mark Harris due up to hit. Not, not happy with that, but he is now having a chuckle with uh, Nuka Nuka at first base. And maybe sometimes when you do get hit, Steve, as you'd know, a little rush of blood comes. But no malice in it, just one slipping away from Pettit there. And uh, Australia would be happy with one out to get a runner on first base. So Harris steps in to the box. The left fielder on this Australian team. So of note, Harrison Peters has sat back down in Australia and New Zealand have got up in the bullpen the tall right hand and Nick Hayes just getting loose just in case. Popped up behind the plate calling in his Nuku Nuku and he makes a basket catch as the catcher Compain slides in underneath his teammate. Compain Scratches his catching arm a little bit. That's a tough play for a catcher going outwards as opposed to the first baseman coming inwards. That's a tough play for anyone right there for both players. But Nathan Nukunuku, 152 games for the Black Sox. He celebrated his 100th test match for the Black Sox this week. He's used all of his experience, stuck his arm out, but not his body in that location to snag that ball. Ryan Sinclair now the batter, the center fielder for Australia. Runner on first base. And with the two-out catcher rule now in effect, it's Harris running at first in place of Norton, which benefits in the speed category. Just a little bit. That will just miss. Hey, hey, buddy, all catchers can run, right? I caught two, don't worry. Uh -huh. <laughs> and trust me, usually the fielder is faster than the catcher. Ryan Sinclair trying to get off here. He's an outstanding center field. He saw that last catch. Hasn't picked up a hit in this tournament yet. 
Watches that come in for a strike. He has got four walks, so maybe if that allows him to get on base, I'm sure they'd love that to happen, especially with the hot hitting Brendan O'Byrne up next. One and two offering coming up from Pettit, and that goes high. Harris bluffs at first, and he'll be looked back to the bag by Compain. Compain just turned and said, go, buddy, if you want to. I've locked and loaded here if you want it. And Harris is having nothing to do with it. So they'll have a little bit of a conference on the mound. Uh, had the pleasure of talking with some of the Australian members uh, this week. And, of course, mentioned that they traveled through Midwestern Ontario, my part of the world where I live, and stopped in the villages of Brussels and Milverton to do some clinics. Of course, New Zealand doing some clinics here as well. Adam Fulkward working with some pitchers. So the top teams in the world doing their part to uh, push along this sport. Three and two now on the batter. Yeah, not just the players. We had uh, Lewis Weldon's mother, Kathy Weldon. She was helping with the graphics, which is what you see at the top of this, uh, the screen there. And she unfortunately had to fly back for, uh, for work commitments. So Kathy. And rung up is Sinclair. He thought it was a little low, but... The umpire thought otherwise, so strike three on Sinclair will end the Australian threat. They leave a runner at first base. More to come. We go to the bottom of the second coming up on Sports Canada TV. We go to the bottom of the second inning, and it's going to be leading off Wayne Laulu coming up to the plate, I believe, here. Yeah, a La La or Wayne Laulu uh, has had a very slow tournament, according to him, but we know cream comes to the top when the business end happens. We saw that yesterday. Wayne Laulu hit a shot, which I don't think has even landed yet. So he now comes in feeling real good in the batter's box. One of the great personalities uh, on the team. Folker getting back to work here and fires it by number 29. I like the question when you asked him, what do you think about when you go up to the box? I don't think I just do. 0-1 pitch coming in, bounces into the catcher, and that evens up the count at 1-1. Yeah, Wayne Laulu celebrating his 50th test cap for the Black Sox of this tournament, and he is an aggressive hitter, but talking to him the other day, he keeps it simple. Folkert back for his second inning of work and slows things up as Laulu just got underneath that pitch, but it goes for a foul ball. I'll tell you what, Steve, Laulu's backswing is faster than my forward swing. That guy is insane. Volker looking to sit, off the, sit down the leadoff hitter, and he gets him. Strike three. And that'll bring up the catcher, Callan Compain. So starts the bottom of the second off right. Now Compain will step into the box to face Volkert. Yeah, Compain is having a great tournament for New Zealand. His debut at a World Cup and uh, funny in the interview does the chop. All the boys are giving him a hard time. And, but I tell you what, they're not giving him a hard time with the way he hits the ball. And He's got plenty of pop with three home runs, seven RBIs, only one walk and only two strikeouts. So he likes action. Nice drop ball there by Folkert on the outside part of the plate. Couldn't touch that. Kirkpatrick shutting out encouragement from first base. Yeah. Shales leading the charge at third. Folkert just dropped that off the table. Has Compain at 0-2 now and sails it just a little high. That's where Norton wanted it. Hit the spot. Last game of the night, the only one on the diamond right now. This is where everybody is. There's a shot up the middle, and Compain wasn't fooled on that one, and 
he is aboard with a solid single. Yeah, when I interviewed Combain the other day, I never knew how big he is. He's actually a big man, 27 years old, full of muscle, and right there he got the bat on the ball and drove that hard, and a poor old Todd Hunter at uh, shortstop had no chance on that one. Tyrone Bottarello up to the plate, the third baseman. Australia setting up their defense here with one out and a runner at first. The corners are going to come in. Yeah, Compain is a threat to run at first base. Again, you see there another example. New Zealand have no egos in this team. Tyrone Bartarelli started the tournament with five hits, every single one of them a home run. So he's got popper right. Chopped off the plate. That will go foul. And everybody will have to reset. Yeah, but what, what Torin Butterello also has is he has a toolbox. He can chop it down. He can drop a bunt. He can slap it over third base. Just such a threat at the batter's box. And that's the reason why Butterello is in this New Zealand Black Sox team. Folkert with the delivery, and that's a little too low. Argentina into the next game, along with USA and Canada. This game will determine the matchups left in the top four. Yeah, it sure will, but the big goal right here is to win. As I see Harrison Peters getting back up, back up in the bullpen out there, if New Zealand convert another run or two here, you know, maybe a quick hook here from Coach Lang Hain. 3-1 delivery comes in, and Botterillo offers at that one and make the count 3-2 and two now. A little smile from Botterillo on that to his coach. Oops. Corners now back to their bags. And that's going to be on the inside part of the corner. And Klusinski... Brings up Bartarillo, yeah, two out in the inning. Bartarillo may be not happy with that pitch. However, Peter Kuinski from Canada, he called that straight away. He's in the best position to see that strike zone, and we've got the best umpires from around the world here at the best fast pitch tournament in the world. Campbell Anoka, leadoff batter in this lineup, back to the plate, shot down the third baseline. That's fair, and going to third is Callan Compain. Throw comes into second and keeps... Inoka at first base, and that was a rocket off the bat. And Inoka picks up his first hit of the game. Yeah, Inoka, he comes with that youth for exuberance. I don't need to take a pitch. I'm just going to go at the first one and blast it down the line and send my buddy all the way to third base on that play. Joel Evans now stepping up. He hit a bloop single in between the second baseman and right fielder back in the first for a double. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, Coach uh, Sorensen would love to see that happen here. But with the pressure happening now, we saw Harrison Peters, uh, sorry, uh, Harry Peters there uh, down the lineup warming up and Coach Lang coming out. Coach Lang uh, obviously wanting to make sure we can settle this down, try and get out of this innings without bleeding another run. There is two out on the board, so it'll be interesting to see how they set it up. Of course, pitch sequencing, very important here. If you give some, something to Evans on the outside part of the plate and he drives it down the right field line, possibly multiple runs come across. No, uh, Anoka is a threat to run from first base. And that's right down the tube for strike number one. There you go. Coach Lang Harrow is not leaving anything to chance here. I see number 22, uh, Jared Farrell getting up. Chops down the uh, bullpen there. Swing and a miss. Evans on the riser. Try to put a little extra oomph in that one. Good pitch from Folkert. It's always fun to watch the best lay back when they're getting a little bit of trouble. They get some enthusiasm and some adrenaline going, and they come right back and do that. Now they've got the runner hung up. No. Nice little play by Australia on the defensive setup to cut that throw from the 
catcher to keep the runner at third. Yeah, we, we thought we might see this in this game. New Zealand trying to tip some oil on the fire, put some pressure on there, forcing the throw all the way to second base in that, and a, a dummy steal play from Anoka. And Australia up to the task, moving in the right direction there. One and two pitch, fouled off. Those are the types of plays you don't see a lot of in the round robin, especially against the uh, teams that have a few things to work on. No, you don't. No, you don't. But you know that they've been working on these plays, and now's the time to start executing them in the playoffs. That's the key, execution. One, two, Folkert on Evans. Comes in, strike three. That will end the inning as the Australian pitcher works himself out of trouble. Two runners stranded. New Zealand still leads one to nothing. Back with more, top of the third on Sports Canada TV. Ball tournament's a place to be. It's been fantastic here with all of the uh, volunteers working at the Pepsi Center from the grounds crew, the organizers, the officials, uh, and the fans are great uh, supporting us with offers of uh, beverages to keep our throats <laughs> nice and, uh, and loose here. Always good to have some water with you to keep on going. There's a shot of the Denmark team. Yeah, I'll tell you what, De uh, Denmark, if you've ever been there, it's a beautiful country, and they love to drink beer in that country. <laughs> Denmark played to a 6-0 loss today, lost to the Dominican, so Denmark's still alive. They'll drop down and play Great Britain in the 2 o'clock consolation game tomorrow, one of the consolation games. Leading off the top of the third here is the ninth hitter in the lineup, number 7, Brendan O'Byrne, the second baseman. I've been waiting to see this guy bet today because, as I said earlier in the broadcast, he's on fire. The last two games, he's hit three home runs, and that's the guy you want up at the plate. And he's the ninth hitter in the lineup. Mm -hmm. That's taken for a strike, so Australia will have their ninth hitter bat here with Nick Shales on deck as they move to the top of the order here in this inning. Pettit with a good delivery, but just misses. So both teams able to make some noise against the starting pitchers, but minimal damage so far. Talking about noise, Steve, I heard the Anoka family uh, down the line there, Duncan leading the chant, two tita my naiwi. So they're trying to get behind the Black Sox and give them every possible chance to win this match. Joel Evans makes a nice catch as the second baseman retires O'Byrne on the pop-up. That'll bring Nick Shales to the plate here. A hot shot down to third, handled by Bottarillo back of the first. Yeah, uh, but great play there by Evans. And, you know, we saw that first Texas Liga that went over his head. Even though he got a glove, they ruled it a double because he got a bad jump. But in that particular case, he got a good jump safely underneath that ball. Shales takes that one for a strike. Doesn't even flinch, though, and will dig in and get back to business. Had the pleasure of interviewing Nick Shales earlier on in the tournament. Had a fantastic conversation with him. You can check out the Aussie Steelers Facebook page to catch that video. Just see they reset the shot clock there and uh, played on by uh, um, Kulinski from Canada. Just making sure he's happy with the clock. Running the clock today was Valdemarlis from Czech Republic. So making sure they're on the same page. And you can see there that Shell's just asking the question, what are you doing? Why are you giving them more time? Here's the pitch. Shell's able to hold up. One and one. 
Saw an interesting call earlier today in the Argentina game against Botswana. One of the Ar Argentinian batters as the ball is slapped to the shortstop. Shales hustling down, but a good throw gets him. 6-3 is the play for the second out. The umpire asked the batter to step in the box. He didn't. He was trying to call time. You don't have to grant time as an umpire and call the strike because you need to get in the box in a reasonable amount of time. That happened to be the third strike on the count, Ooh. and he was struck out looking. Argentina not too happy about that, but they went on and beat Botswana 5-0. James Todd Hunter at the plate now. Hit a double. That was the flare to right field back in the first inning. Yeah, for those who don't know how the 22nd clock works, the batter has 10 seconds to get into the batter's box. Otherwise, it's a strike, and the pitcher has to pitch it within the 20 seconds. Otherwise, it's deemed a ball. Pettit blocks it, throws it over to first. Lots of time, and that's going to be the third out of the inning. So Josh Pettit works his magic, and we'll go to the bottom of the third. New Zealand still leading by one. More coming up on Sports Canada TV. Nathan Nukunuku lines up to bat first here in the top of the third as the Australian fans yeah, give their cheer. Reiterating in their favorite chant, Aussie, 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 oi, oi, oi. And I know that pierces my ears, <laughs> but uh, it does wonders for their nation. They use it in all sporting codes. And good on them too, and it's great to see the Aussie supporters here this week. Nukunuku stepping up. For the second time of this game, struck out looking in the first inning. First offering a little low on the outside. One and zero pitch coming in, and Nukunuku backs away from that. So Folkert's been able to do just enough to keep things under control here, but. He comes with a lot of experience, Folk. He's been around a long time now, and he doesn't get frazzled. There's a nice shot. Folk out getting a pitcher's strike right there, you know, in an unhittable location. And if he keeps on getting that called, he'll stay there all day. Just gets the bat on that one to foul it off. That's unfair right there. And he, he's lucky he hung the change up, but when you throw as fast as Folkard, then you've got an effective change up. Not a good day at the office. Two and two pitch. Right down the heart of the plate, and Nukunuku strikes out, looking for the second time of the night. And Brad Rona will come to the plate now. Took a walk back in the first inning. Yeah, Brad Rona, we talked about he's fastidious and uh, uh, with the batter's box. And um, he also, uh, I mentioned maybe a leader to earlier, he gets a strike zone on him that he's earned over many years of playing in the black jersey. Rona, an emphatic swing and tops that out behind the backstop. I think Rona knows if he can plot another run here, that could affect Falkard's ability to stay in this ball game, and that's the hardest swing I've seen him make all week. There's a pure example of that strike zone that Brad Rona has, and like I said, he's earned that. It's taken him many years to develop a relationship with the umpires around the world. He respects them. He never turns around. He never questions them. There's a shot. Strike two there. That's what I'm trying to teach my son. He's 11, learning the sport. 
tends to have the bad habit of always looking at the umpire when a call is made. Just worry about the ball in front of you. Hot shot to Shales. Nicely taken on the hop over to Kirkpatrick. And it's the second out of the inning. Yeah, Ronan with plenty of power there, but that ball on the outside, he pulled that uh, down the third baseline, and Shales uh, throwing out a good glove there to snag that grounder and uh, throws out Rona for the second out of the innings. Thomas Anoka coming up to the plate. Hit a double in his first at-bat, driving in the game's only run. He was stranded at second. Yeah, Noka, senior player on this team now. And They're going to check that down at first base. And Sonmez from Germany says no, he doesn't swing. Yeah, he's got a good view of it from first base. And like we see, we've got the best umpires in the world here. That one goes for a strike. Straightaway defensive setup for... The team in green with two away here in the bottom of the third inning. Shales will scoop it up, has lots of time, fires to Kirkpatrick. And like that, New Zealand is sat down. We'll go to the top of the fourth, due up for Australia. Some of their heavy hitters, including Andrew Kirkpatrick, leading things off. More to come on Sports Canada TV. Stereo sound here at the ballpark. You got fans cheering on the left, fans cheering on the right, stuck in the middle with you. one nothing is the score for New Zealand, but Andrew Kirkpatrick's going to try to fix that. He's leading off the top of the fourth. Andrew Kirkpatrick there, and you see Sports Canada TV. They're doing a fabulous, fabulous job for us here. And, but Andrew Kirkpatrick, he comes with a lot of punch, and there's a reason he's uh, a third in the lineup. Not so much this week producing the way you do, he does, but I'll tell you what, he'll come good when the time is needed. Holds up on that one. Started his career as a 16-year-old, touted as... Uh, you know, the next big stick slash pitcher, and he hasn't disappointed whatsoever. Yeah, there's not many uh, pitchers around the world that go both ways these days, but Kirkpatrick is a legitimate one of those. Just fouls that off. Would drive his coach's uh, batty when he was younger because they wouldn't want to have him hit in the lineup because he's pitching, and he'd want to get in there. Wouldn't really have a choice because he was their power hitter, and they needed a stick. So, uh what do you do? you got to make those tough choices. Tonight he's playing first and in the lineup batting third. Yeah, it is quite common, though, when, when kids start playing softball, your best player tends to be the pitcher and your best hitter. So, um, But when they get to the international level, they focus normally on one task. And for some reason, Kirkpatrick can do both. And he's a lefty. Slaps it, and that's off the wrist of Evans. But won't get Kirkpatrick a hot shot. And Kirkpatrick's on first base after that rocket. It'll be interesting to see how they score that. Got Evans on the short hop. Yeah, he sure did, but Kirkpatrick got all of that, and that was a hard hit ground ball, and uh, Evans would have loved to have got his chest behind that one, and I'm sure he'll take one for the team next time up. That'll bring up Lewis Weldon, the DP, this afternoon for this evening's game, and it's a strikeout for Weldon back in the first swinging. And now he has a runner at first base with nobody out. Weldon showing bunt and then pulling it back there. And we've seen that happen a few times this week. And uh, we've commented that it's not a very good technique to do. And only a select few can do it. And if I am Lewis Weldon, stand there and hit champ because you're a good hitter. 
Slaps it towards second. This could be two. Nice relay, and they get the double play as Kirkpatrick went sliding into second, but the shortstop Evans able to make the transition, and there's two away. Yeah, what about Evans, uh, Joel Evans at second base, making up for that ground ball off the arm. He made a perfect shovel to Cole Evans at shortstop with a powerful throw to get uh, complete the double play, but not before Kirkpatrick tips him on his head on the slide going into two, and I'm sure no malice intended, but that was a hard slide. Trying to break things up. Ryan Merriman up to the plate now with two away. It is recorded as an error on the second baseman, Evans. That's Joel Evans. So no hit for Kirkpatrick. Merriman here with two away in the top of the fourth. And Josh Pettit finding the mark there. As I mentioned earlier, Merriman is really hot at this moment. He's hitting 500, and he would have loved to have some base runners on the base path right now when he's hitting. Swing and a miss as Merriman tried to climb the ladder to make contact there. Flew out back in the second to the center fielder. And there we go, Merriman will have a seat. Three batters come up to the plate. Kirkpatrick reached on an error, but erased on a double play. New Zealand back to work for the bottom of the fourth next on Sports Canada TV. Ballpark flair here at the Pepsi Center in Whitehorse, Yukon. I'll take some Cracker Jacks, please. One of my favorites. Cole Evans, Wayne Laulu, and Callan Campaign coming up to the plate. The six, seven, and eight hitters in the lineup. I gotta say, Steve, I've, uh, it's my first time in Yukon and with these Canadian supporters, they are hilarious. They love the game of fast food softball. They get right into it. They inject uh, their, their energy, and it's infectious to be around them. Uh, just great to have them. They're intelligent ball, uh, fans as well. Cole Evans, the batter, the shortstop, leading things off for New Zealand. It was funny this morning as uh, I arrived for my first game, there were fans setting their chairs on the bleachers. And uh, if you've ever been to a playoff hockey game in uh, rural parts of the country, it's very similar to going in and laying your blankets on the benches and reserving your spot even though there's no reserved seating. <laughs> Well, we don't have ice hockey in New Zealand and Australia. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> Hockey's played on grass down there, but uh, a slightly different game, I'm sure. But if, you, if you're saying that, you know, in New Zealand and Australia, all we do, we just put a can of beer on our chair at their football stadium, make sure that's my seat, buddy. Don't touch it. Two and one pitch comes in, and that's called strike two. So a tight game, New Zealand cracking the scoreboard back in the first inning. And both teams have volleyed back and forth, but no extra runs on the board to this point. Two and two now the count. Running down uh, the scoreboard from this morning, Hong Kong defeated Turkey 15-0, ending Turkey's first international appearance in the sport. Argentina beat Botswana 5-0. It was Great Britain over India 8-1. USA over Venezuela, 11-3 as the ball's chopped to the shortstop and Todd Hunter's going to be charged with an error. And New Zealand has a runner on base. And we talk about this all the time, that errors and walks 
have a nasty habit of coming back to haunt you. Yeah, they sure can. And uh, uh, that wasn't a hard hit ball. It must have just maybe taken a little bit different bounce. And But the pace of Cole Evans running down to first base added more pressure on Todd Hunter there than he would have liked to have had. And as we see, uh, Harry Peters up in the bullpen again for Australia. Wayne Laulu up to the plate, shows bunt, but pulls the bat head back. Laulu struck out back in the second inning. So similar setup, Kirkpatrick on an error, reaches base in the top of the inning, erased on a double play. We'll see if Australia can do the same thing here, but Laulu squaring to bunt again and then unable to do so. Yeah, but you won't find Laulu trying to show the bunt and hit the ball. He either bunts it or hits it, keeps it simple. That's his M.O., and uh, Cole uh, Evans is a threat to run here even if he doesn't bunt the ball. Norton calling the signs. Folkert comes in, gets Laulu swinging on that low pitch. Canada beat Japan 2-0 earlier tonight as the Canadians still undefeated in this tournament. One and two pitch on its way. Slam to left field by Laulu, and that's going to drop foul on the left field side. Just couldn't hang in fair territory. Yeah, Laulu shortens up on the bat, but he got handcuffed there on the inside and just pulled that one foul. And, uh, Laulu looking like he's wanting to hit the ball here. He knows he's up again. A real good pitcher. Falkard has come with his A game today. One and two pitch. On its way, and that's low and outside, trying to get the batter to chase. Steve, I can feel the crowd, especially on the New Zealand side here, the New Zealand supporters. They're starting to lift their chanting. They know this is a real opportunity with a leadoff runner on first base with no out. 2-2 pitch, a little too high. Down the third base line, members of Team Botswana. A fantastic effort by the squad this tournament, finishing in the top eight. And... Uh, they're improving their program every day. Here's the pitch to Laulu to third base, goes to second, an opportunity to get the double play, and no. Wayne Laulu beats it out. It was not a hard hit ball to Shale, so he got it to second, and the second baseman, O'Byrne, trying to turn two, but just couldn't do it. Yeah, look, don't be surprised with Laulu getting safe at first base there. He might be built like a bear, but he runs like a deer. I tell you that, he's a quick man for his size. Fielder's choice officially on the scorecard, and that'll bring up Callan Campaign, a single back in the second inning. Sunshine out now through the cloud cover, warming things up a little bit here. Campaign pops it up, and that's going to sail out of play and hit our roof. Thank goodness, because I don't think I can catch anymore. Yeah, Campaign not known to bunt. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a man that likes to swing the bat, and uh, in his case, he's got his wish now with two strikes on him to swing away. 0-2 count on the batter. Runner at first base. Folkard will take a step back and regroup nice pitch as he gets campaign swinging so that's the second out of the inning and Tyrone Botterillo coming up struck out looking back in the second inning 0 for 1 tonight right just for the viewers in Australia and New Zealand, at the World Cup, they do not employ a designated runner. There is none of that. So Laulu will stay at first base and no designated to come on in that situation. Of course, you can have a pinch runner, but then you use a substitution, right? The only time where you can bring somebody in is for the 2-0 catcher rule where the catcher can go and get his equipment on. That's solely to speed up the game. Of course, because catchers are quick, right? Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one nothing, 1-0 one oh on the uh, pitch count and swinging through at Botterillo. Botterillo needing to nut down here, just swinging that high pitch, and he'd like to get something in the middle of the bat. Here it comes. Nice block by Norton. Yeah, Norton saving 30 feet there for sure with that dropping down to his knees and clever catching. 
so hard to get young catchers these days to drop on the knees and scoop the ball as opposed to trying to trap it as it comes in. 2-1 pitch. Change of speeds gets Bonarillo guessing wrong, and 2-2 two and two now the count. If Falkard using all of his arsenal here, and he knows he needs to. This New Zealand lineup is hot at the moment. He's got to try and keep them off balance, and he's doing a good job of it. Twos across the board. That pitch comes in low, and now with the count three and two, the runner will take off. Bartarillo will dig in, and Folkard looking to get out of the inning. And there he goes, second time. Bartarillo punched out on strikeouts, or on strikes for the strikeout. And that will end the fourth. We'll go to the top of the fifth. Australia sending Norton Harrison Sinclair to the plate. More to come on Sports Canada TV. one nothing into the top of the fifth we go. It's been a classic fastball contest here. And back and forth a little bit on the offense. Great clutch pitching in key situations. And Nick Norton is going to lead things off for Australia here in the top of the fifth. Yeah, Australia would like to get going. They've only got one hit in the, in the game so far. And uh, it's only one mil, so one swing or... Manufacturing a run would be ideal for Australia in the situation halfway through the ball game. Norton hit by a pitch back in the second inning, but they left him at first. And a little chopper off the plate. Pettit charges and a flip to Nuku Nuku. And just like that, there's one away. Yeah, nice play. Just taking the time there. No need to hurry. Just allow the play to develop and uh, an easy out at first base. Mark Harris, the left fielder, stepping up to the plate now. His line, a pop-up to the first baseman. And that was in foul territory. Good pitch by Pettit there. Well, Mark Harris comes into this ball game hitting 333. And for those who don't know what 333 means, it means a third of the time he comes up the bat, he gets a safe hit. Pretty good standard in the sport. My line was more like one for 33, which isn't so good. Everyone needs an orange boy, buddy. Don't worry. 0-2 oh two is the count on Harris here. Second batter of the inning. Pettit really settling in here as it stretched to the fifth, and Harris is going to be punched out on strikeouts. And you get the sense that Pettit seems to have found that zone that pitchers do in big games. Yeah, I mean, he's a power pitcher, but he's also pitching with precision tonight, and it's a great matchup, uh, Pettit versus Folkard tonight, and two very good pitchers, Pettit in fire, on fire and in form, sorry, uh, and Folkard using his experience to throw a great game tonight. Strikeout victim Ryan Sinclair from the second inning now batting the center fielder. And again, another strike rolls in. Josh Peter just making sure he's happy with the front of the block there. He can, he can dig out a little bit and uh, just making sure he's comfortable. 0-1 pitch. And that just misses. Looked like it was close to the same spot that found strike number one. Yeah, of course it did. But as we've said before, we've got the best umpires in the world. And the Canadian, Peter Kalinske, got the best view. He says it's a ball. It must be a ball. 
One and one count on its way through, and that riser sails a little too high for two and one. Saying, Steve, we truly do have an international uh, group of umpires here today. Interestingly enough, there are three Canadian umpires on today with one Jim, German and one from Puerto Rico and one from Czech Republic. There's a shot up the gap, and Sinclair will be aboard with two out. Single, and now Brandon O'Byrne coming up to the plate. He struck out back in the third. Sinclair just breathing a sigh of relief. That's his first hit of the tournament, and what a time to bring out his first hit there um, for his country, and his country will thank him for it. So New Zealand will have to be careful here as Pettit will no doubt want to get O'Byrne out in this instance with Nick Shales up at bat. Clever Coach Lang, they're having a quick word to O'Byrne without getting a conference, and that's from experience. Nick Shales on deck, and if O'Byrne can find his way on base, there'll be a couple of Australia runners that Shales will want to drive in, but... O'Byrne will watch strike one come in. Well, you know, uh, Burn, well, maybe one of the reasons I put him in here there is they know that if with Shales behind him, he's going to get a lot of strikes. And it's a perfect situation right here. They won't want to get to Shales in this circumstance, and they want to get a uh, burn out instead. There's a shot up the gut, and there you go. Runner will advance to third base. And we have runners on the corners for Australia. Sinclair to third. O'Byrne at first on the single. And Nick Shales comes up to the plate, and this is where your big guy has to perform. Yeah, it sure does. And O'Byrne uh, getting one off the fist there, driving it up the middle. We'll see Sorensen come out of the dugout to talk about this situation. Is he going to put Shales on and load the bases as we see Nick Hayes warming up in the bullpen again for New Zealand? These are the situations where you earn your paycheck for New Zealand and or for any country as a coach. Press the situation, you're ahead by one. Australia want to convert a run here, and uh, he's going to make a decision. Whatever he decides to do here may determine the outcome of this ball game. So Nick Shales is 0 for 2 on the night with a ground out to third base and short. On deck is James Todd Hunter, who has a double, and he grounded out to the pitcher in the third. So do you pitch to Shales, or do you kind of nibble at him, try to make him swing, and then face Todd Hunter? But you're right. Any decision you make uh, is going to be a game changer. There is two out in the inning, so yes. they just need the one out. You sure do, and if you walk shells on one, you put the go-ahead run at second base. So if Todd Hunter gets another single, Australia take the lead. So it's a big question to ask as a coach, and uh, in this circumstance, I'm glad I'm the commentator. <laughs> this is where the chess match comes into play. Shales take the takes the first pitch high out of the strike zone. Pettit will settle in for the second pitch of the up bat. Setting on the outside part of the plate, it really looks like they're not going to give him anything too close to hit. Shales isn't going to chase. Well, Shales spends a lot of the time in the, uh, in the uh, North American summer up here, so all these Canadian uh, Umpires know him well. He would have earned a strike zone just like R Ronda has. And uh, maybe in that circumstance right there, getting a ball when sometimes another player might get a strike. 3-0 and oh on Shales. You give him the green light if Pettit grooves it. But that would be very dangerous. I can guarantee you he's got the green light right here. Just like the green on the back of his shirt. That comes in for a strike. Shales didn't like where the pitch location was and let it go. Still advantageous to the batter at 3-1. and one. Shales does have power to both sides of the ballpark, so he can, he can drive it with power on each side, so hard to defend against. Here's the pitch, and that will be driven to foul territory and out of play. Yep. And crunch time for both sides, 3-2, and two, two out with runners on the corners here on the top of the fifth. Yeah, it means the runner at one will be in motion, obviously, on this pitch, and uh, Shales was a little behind on that, uh, on that pitch, and don't think that'll happen to him again. He'll adjust to uh, get the bat out front, but he knows this is a very important part of the ball game for Australia. 3-2 delivery, and that's hit into left field. One run will score. The runner from first goes to third. 
and Shales jumps to second on the throw to third, and we are all tied up at one apiece. Well, that's the price you pay when you pitch to one of the best hitters in the world in that situation. And in this case, uh, Coach Sorensen getting it wrong and trying to go at Shells there. And he proved the difference in that situation, driving that ball with ease down the left field line to convert Australia's first run and tie this ball game. Mark Harris bobbled the ball a bit, trying to pick it up. And then he threw to third base, which allowed the runner to move to second. So now you've got the go-ahead run at third, a cushion at second if Todd Hunter can get a hold of something here. Yeah, my mistake, I hadn't cr changed the boards there. Obviously, Thomas Anoka at left field, he did make a bobble. He tried to still get the lead runner. If he'd have thrown it to two, Shales would have stayed at first base in that situ situation. So Todd Hunter up at bat, and we'll half swing on that. So waiting for the score line on the previous play so Byrne was credited with the single shales will be credited with a single at least as well yeah went to second on the throw so Todd Hunter up at the plate one for two tonight we're seeing Kilm campaign they're looking into the dugout to get a signal of what Sorensen would like to call here and um, sometimes some teams do that and I think Sorensen's taking control in this situation Todd Hunter sends it out of play. One and two count on the batter. Talking about taking control, we see Nathan Nukunuku now walking over from first base to Josh Bennett to take control of the situation from where he stands. Now, Nathan Nukunuku is a very experienced campaigner. His sixth World Cup, as we mentioned earlier, and over 150 games for the Black Sox and 100 tests. Pop up to first base, Nukunuku will settle under it. And New Zealand will get out of the inning, allowing just the one run, two runners stranded. A shot of Pettit there as he heads back to the bench, and New Zealand's turn to the bottom of the fifth we go. More coming up on Sports Canada TV. So we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. New Zealand will send up the top of the order, I believe. Campbell Onoka, number 25, will step into the box. Good night for Onoka. Has a single, one for two on the night, his third plate appearance. Well, in New Zealand, a perfect situation to reply here. Top of the order, just what they need. And uh, after giving up that run in the last innings, they need to answer Australia straight away to put their foot back on the pedal. Just a scorer's note, uh, Nick Shells was credited with a double there to, uh, if you're keeping score. Talking about double, uh, Jared Farrell with the double sideburns warming up in the bullpen for Australia. Todd. Uh, Folkart on the pitching plate right now and down to Campbell Anoka 2-0. And, oh. and he flares it to right field. Merriman back and it's off the base of the wall. Campbell's going to try it for three. In he comes and a leadoff triple. And I think Merriman was fooled on that. It didn't look like he got a clean break, got twisted as he was going back. And Campbell Anoka 
ends up at third base. Yeah, one of those tough ones to read. It's a spinning ball that comes off the bat of Anoka, but he gave a lot of energy into it and clearly got over um, Merriman at Ryefield in that situation. And Mark Sorensen getting the first runner on the third base with no outs. He's a happy man now. Joel Evans, a single and a strikeout here. And Anoka's coming home and he's going to score. But it's a foul ball. It's a foul ball. And Mark Sorensen is furious, and Peter Klasinski is trying to defuse the situation. Yeah, what he's asking here, he may be doing it a little bit heated. What he's asking, you have to check with someone on this play. It's too big a call to make by yourself. Uh, he, he didn't think from where Sorensen is. Obviously, he's got Evans in front of him. He can't see uh, see the contact if there is any, but it sure would be good right now. And a very important part of the ball game, if Kowinski would talk to, maybe in this case, and he's come all the way down to see him, Solmier's from Germany, who's got a good view from the first baseline. It's going to go down as a foul ball as it tipped the back of Evans and Inoka will have to go back to third base. Yeah, big call right there. And uh, I know uh, both countries are on the edge of their seats right here because this game is electric. It's exactly what we thought it would be, Steve. And I tell you, I've got two seatbelts on trying to keep in the coverage <laughs> box. One and one is the count on the batter. We are into the bottom of the fifth inning. And the fans coming to the park tonight and those watching on Sports Canada TV, you're getting exactly what you expected. It's been fantastic. Two and one count now on Evans. A little flare to left field and that's going to land foul in that triangle of left, short, and third. Yeah, you would have known with these runners running back to make that catch, and Noka would have been off for the races heading home on that play. Yeah, and that's true. Like, even if someone didn't make that catch, you're tagging up, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes maybe smarter to let that go and just reset everything at the plate. Two and two count on Mr. Evans. There's a pop-up. Second baseman try to settle underneath, and he does. Anoka will bluff. The second baseman will bluff the throw. Not an easy one for Brendan O'Byrne, but he hauls it in. Yeah, nice catch by O'Byrne there, and plenty of pressure. He knew if he drops that, Anoka will take off. And, but if he makes that catch, Anoka knows there's no way of taking off with it being that short. So one out here, tied at one. Go-ahead run for New Zealand on third, and up to the plate is I think one of the clutch players of this tournament in Nathan Nukunuku. We've seen him come up in big spots before, but Folkers had his number and it's down the line. And Anoka will score and Nukunuku sprints to second. He doesn't stop and a double gives New Zealand the lead. Captain fantastic, Captain fantastic. Nathan Nukunuku, he is on fire this week. We talked about his hitting. 363, that's unheard of at a world tournament. He may have struck out in his first two at-bats, but he took that first pitch and said, see you later, buddy. I'm going to bring another run for my country and make everyone in that Ramblers club right now stand up on their feet. Well, here's the thing. Sometimes it's not how many you hit, it's when you hit them. So mm -hmm. putting the strikeouts behind him, Nuku Nuku takes the first pitch down the line. And now Brad Rona with the runner in scoring position. And already a run in in this inning. Folkard with a little more pop in that delivery. In for a strike on Rona. The line on the designated player tonight. A walk run scored and a ground out to third base. Yeah, Rona there just looking to poke that one the other way here. Uh, he knows that if he can get that next another run in for New Zealand, that could be enough going into the sixth to clinch this game the way Pettit is pitching. The winner of this game will face Canada tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. Canada undefeated. 
the loser will slide in to play the U.S. in an elimination game. Winner moves on, loser goes home. The U.S. with a big 11-3 win over Venezuela earlier in today's games. 0-2 pitch. And Rona with the shot. It's going to hang up for Merriman, though. And thrown in right away by the right fielder. Good contact, but just hung up. And the second out of the inning is recorded. Thomas Anoka coming up to the plate. He doubled back in the first, and he grounded out to Shales in the third. Got to say, good contact from Rona there, but Merriman, of any kids are watching the telecast today, did a great example. Got right behind the ball, two-handed catch, textbook. Two hands. How many times do we see the one-handed grab and just makes everybody nervous? Double action in the Australian bullpen right now with Farrell and Peters. And there's a crush, deep left field. That's back to the wall. That's gone. Thomas and Noka coming up trumps with a grand slam yesterday. Now with a two-run shot in the fifth innings. I tell you what, if they weren't up on their feet before in New Zealand, right now they're lifting the roof off all over the country. Well, that pitch left belt high right down the heart of the plate. And Thomas and Oka made no bones about it as it was gone with some zip. So New Zealand now up by three in the game, two out in all of this happening. Joel Evan or Cole Evans, pardon me, now up to the plate. Grounder to Shales. Nice pickup and fires over to Kirkpatrick for the third out of the inning. But not before some damage is done. A triple from Campbell Anoka comes in on a double from Nukunuku, and he scores on a home run from Thomas Anoka. Make it 4-1 to the top of the six. More to come on Sports Canada TV. So the top of the sixth inning, Australia has fallen down four to one now, and Andrew Kirkpatrick's going to lead off here in the top of the sixth. Grounded out to the second baseman, reached on an error back of the fourth and was erased on a double play. I have to say right here, Coach Len Harrow, and you know, he obviously rolled the dice for getting Falkart out here, and he's given him four good innings, and uh, that last inning's in a crooked number up there hurts. But the thing that's really hurting him right now, his best pitcher is the first batter, so he can't warm up between the innings. So if he's going to make a change, it's got to be Harry Peters first. Maybe they do a switch and try and do something with, uh, with Kirkpatrick and something coming on the field for him to warm up. But tough situation for Coach uh, Harrow in this situation. At the same time, Folkert's your go-to guy, and how many times has he pitched out of those types of situations? Just didn't happen this time as Pettit goes back to work here in the top of the sixth inning. The New Zealand pitcher has been almost perfect, just allowing the one run. one and 0 pitch, Kirkpatrick. Yeah, I think the best thing Kirkpatrick could do for his country right now is to hit a bomb, run around those bases fast, and get in that bullpen straight away. Still only a three-run lead, so Kirkpatrick to the shortstop. Plant throw, and it's high, and Kirkpatrick will stay at first base as the shortstop. Cole Evans made a valiant effort, but that was a tough play deep in the hole. Yeah, it was in the 5-6 hole there, and he just flew that throw. But I tell you, Kellen Compain running down the line behind Kirkpatrick almost got a cheap out there. As Kirkpatrick turned, looked like he may have wanted it to go. 
but right there on the spot was a first place umpire, Glip Somers from Germany. He said no when uh, Compain applied the tag. Wanted to touch on that because I've noticed, uh, especially with uh, the New Zealand uh, team, Van Leeshout and Ave uh, Compain, uh, when that play happens they're down the line who and you know who else did that very well Patrick Shannon yeah was one of the best and uh, sometimes catchers get a little too lazy they don't go down to back up that throw because if they're not there runners going to second well I'll tell you what it started obviously way before that I remember Bevan Martin one of the great catchers for New Zealand and uh, he was number two to Mark Sorensen but he was fundamentally sound and he would do that all the time and he is now one of the uh, under 19 uh, uh, coaches and a support group there, and he is definitely teaching the New Zealand catchers these days to make that play. Lewis Weldon up to bat now. The DP struck out back in the first and hit into a double play in the fourth inning. So kind of a similar setup here. It's Kirk. They're going to give an error to Cole Evans on the throw. I think that's a tough one to take, but it's a second error of the game. Yeah. Or check that first error of the game, pardon me. Yeah, and saying that it was a high throw, and, and you know, the scorers are international here, and I think they got the right play in that situation. I, I don't like to see New Zealand have an error, but I think they might have got that one right. But. Here's Weldon up to the plate and fouls that off one and two. The good thing, though, Cole Evans, this is his second World Cup. He's still very young, uh, the age of 19, I believe, uh, at the moment. But he has got a bit of experience. Now, he'll know to shake that off and come back and make a great play up next. Australian's going to get uh, want to get Weldon going here in that four spot with the big stick. One and two delivery comes in. Change up. And that was fouled off. Weldon thought he had a beat on it, but no. Weldon's MO, in my mind, is on the outside of the plate. If you can free his arms, he's a very dangerous hitter. So if you can tie him up, uh, in that case, they change the, uh, the pace uh, to try and off-balance him. But inside, I think, is we want to attack Weldon uh, in this situation. And Coach Lang Harrow, you see there with Kirkpatrick at first base, he can't warm up. So he's going to bring in a substitute runner so Kirkpatrick can go to the bullpen and start warming his arm. Very clever by Coach Lang Harrow right there. So it's going to be 38, I believe. Uh, we'll try to get the number on that. Uh, Julian Jamont. The first base runner now in for Kirkpatrick. And it's Weldon with the stick. Swing and foul off his leg. Dead ball. Those are the painful types of strikes. I had targeted Julian Jamont to be the first drop for a pinch hitter, actually. He's hitting 444 with home run and three RBIs, but that's not going to happen for him anymore. And he's probably happy, whatever my country asks. And as we speak, Andrew Kirkpatrick is going down to the bullpen for Australia. Three-run lead right now for New Zealand in the top of the six. One and two pitch, and Weldon just gets a piece of that one staying alive and in this at-bat. Just peeking the other way at the New Zealand bullpen. Hayes is still up. And now they've also got the lefty specialist, Carl Gollan. One and two on its way inside and fouled off again. And Weldon's taking a beating at the plate. Yeah, he is, and, uh, you know, I probably just heard a screech from Australia, and I tried to say before, Kathy Weldon helped us with the graphics earlier on this week. She had to go home for work commitments, and I, I know that was killing her. Kathy, I hope you've arrived safely home in Australia, and you're enjoying the stream because we miss you here at the ballpark, and, and I'm sure uh, your son will miss you rubbing that leg later on tonight. So Weldon digs in again, back for more. One and two pitch on its way. A swing and a miss as Weldon goes down. Wow, Steve, that was power on power. I mentioned he come inside on him. That's what they were doing, and that's why he got that one inside on him. But then he gave him what he wanted, that rise ball on the outside of the zone. That's Lewis Weldon's honey pitch. This time, not quite. Ryan Merriman. The right fielder flew it to center, struck out looking tonight in the second and fourth inning, respectively. Now in the sixth, steps up to the plate with the runner at first. 
As you probably know, those that are scoring at home, Australia are in their third time through the lineup. And that normally is around the time that you maybe look about possibly making a pitching change. And Good eyes from Merriman. However, Pettit does still look solid out there. Again, the game of chess between both managers. It's a very fine line on making changes, what works and what doesn't. And that one just missing to push the count to 3-0. and Yeah, time called here by Nathan Nukunuku coming in from first base and just making sure that we settle down here, take a breather, tuck your shirt in, uh, and uh, get regather. We're happy to go at this batter. We're not looking to walk him, and we don't want to give Australia too many views uh, and giving them four turns at bat. Nick Norton on deck for Australia right now. And Merriman fouls that off. Steve, I got told the uh, uh, this is the shirt that uh, um, Josh Pettit is wearing. One of the rookies who did the laundry earlier in the week must have pushed the button a little too hard on the dryer <laughs> and shrugged the tops a little. So that's why that's popping out a bit. He's normally a very tidy, presented man as Josh Pettit. And he doesn't mind as long as he produces for his country the way he looks. Got to love that, right? Still got rookies when you're in the national team. Go and do the laundry, son. <laughs> Three and one count on Merriman now. Target set, and that's going to be low for ball four. And Australia now with runners on first and second. And Norton coming up to the plate. He was hit by a pitch and then grounded out to the pitcher. So he's 0 for 1 on the night with two plate appearances. Merriman's looking like he's trying to call time at first base there for some reason. Not too sure what it was. He's settled down there, gone back to his base. So runners on one and two here. Big part for Australia. They can answer back in this innings. Big part of the game. Three-run lead for New Zealand. And Pettit reaching back a little bit for something extra. Strike one. Really surprised, Steve, uh, Steve to see that Australia haven't applied any of the short game yet here. And... Um, they normally are quite intelligent and try to sneak things around with to push bunt or whatever the case is. And maybe Coach Harris is going to come up with it shortly. Low and inside is Pettit. Now a little more inconsistent. He was golden for the first five innings trying to work out of a jam here. Yeah, and saying that, looking down the bullpen, both Hayes and Gollum working hard, getting ready just in case they're called upon by their country. Fouled off. Quite the story for Carl Golan with this national team. Had a nice chat with him early on in the week. Yeah, great story. He's back in black at a World Cup 13 years after winning gold in 2004. One and two pitch coming up here from Pettit. And Norton stays alive as he fouls it off first base side. So now you see the Australian hitters starting to time a little better, not as much zip on the Pettit delivery. Yeah, right, not as many uh, misses by the batters uh, from Australia. And that happens, we mentioned, when you're third time through the lineup, no matter who the pitcher is, you're going to start to get their number a little. And uh, it'd be good to see if uh, um, Cullum Compain behind the dish there starts mixing in the change up to vary the pace. That one, an awkward release point, and now it's two and two. Mark Harris on deck for Australia. Runners eager to go on first and second. Pitch comes in and fouled off Norton. And the ankle biters continue for the Australia hitters. Yeah, that's because Pettit is not afraid to use both sides of the plate. And uh, Callum Compain calling a great game there, obviously looking to the dugout, seeing what Coach Sorensen would like him to utilize and taking advice. And, but using both sides of the plate, trying to offset the batter is a key aspect of the game for the battery. Two and two. 
and popped way up, and that's going to come our way. Misses our roof. Nothing like a foul boy to get the crowd excited, right, Steve? Well, you know you're at a ball game when there's a foul ball and you can hear the announcer or the crowd yell, heads up. <laughs> yep. two, two and two count now on Norton. And a good battle here by the Australian catcher against the New Zealand starter who rings him up. And a huge strikeout there for Pettit and company. Mark Harris steps to the plate two away. Yeah, Josh Pettit there answering the call of his nation and picking up that strikeout and a lot of pitches in the dead at bat and his pitch count is getting up a bit here. You can see him starting to fatigue a little. Uh, and, then, you know, maybe you might see a closer come in for the last innings. I think we have a pinch hitter here, Liam O'Leary, 35. So he'll come in and hit for Mark Harris. There's a new runner at second, I believe, with the two-out catcher rule. So O'Leary stepping into the batter's box. And O'Leary takes a strike. Met his parents earlier this week while we were out and about in Whitehorse. And yes. fantastic a sure, mom and dad. Sure did. I was surprised that um, she was in the supporting an Australian because she's a uh, full-blooded Māori lady and it was great to have a cuddle and a kiss with her uh, the other night. There's a shot and that's through. Will they send the runner? Throw to the plate is high and it gets by the catcher but backed up by Pettit. So trucking home was Julian Jamat at second. To third goes Merriman and Liam O'Leary comes up with a big hit for Australia here. Yeah, he sure did. He may have been born in New Zealand, but he lives in Australia these days, and Australia love him, especially for that hit right there that is clutch for Australia, getting it on the outside and driving that ball through the 5-6 hole, picking up a run for Australia, just what they needed to stay in touch with New Zealand. 65 now stepping up to the plate. This is Ryan Sinclair, struck out looking and hit a single. He's also scored one of the two Australian runs tonight. Well, mention Sinclair, he got his first hit of the tournament in this game, so uh, if there's any time to come good, it's especially right now. Two runners in scoring position. Pettit's still in. Does this surprise you with two out in the inning? Yeah, I think the only reason I thought they stayed with him was because we were getting towards the end of the innings, but uh, at any time, you know, maybe they might make a change here and with a with a two-run lead, well, they had three before, surely that's enough for a closer to shut the door. And Sinclair fouls that one off. It's quickly 0-2. Look, it's a gamble you make, though, Steve, isn't it? You know, it's Coach Johnson's call, and we saw one earlier on in the game where he chose to go at shells, and that didn't work, and... Uh, hopefully that hasn't made him a little gung shy here to make the change. But uh, look, if he needs it, I'm sure he's getting good advice from his pitching coach, Jimmy Warner, who's been in this situation many a time. And it with the 0-2 count on Sinclair. Here's the payoff pitch and just fouled off. Again, the tying run at second base right now. New Zealand 4-2 leaders at this point in the top of the sixth inning. Yeah, don't be mistaken. The guy to go to right now is Sinclair. Even though he picked up his first hit in this, got a hit in this ball game, it's only been won the whole tournament. But right after him is the red hot Brendan O'Byrne and then Nick Shell. So you don't want to go there. And fouled off the rise ball to stay alive. Pettit wanted that one. One thing that has happened in this inning, Steve, is it's a long innings and it's allowed Kirkpatrick to get ready. So Kirkpatrick will be ready to come in if Coach Harrow wants to make the change for the next innings. Australia trying to make it close. And that's low for ball one. So we get to the point of the game where everybody holds their breath a little bit on each pitch. Yeah, they do, but uh, you know what? You've just got to keep on breathing as an athlete here in this situation. Just allow the game to play. That's why I'm not an athlete. I can't breathe in these situations. And a nice pitch by Pettit. Gets Sinclair swinging for the third out of the inning. 
We might just stay on the air a little bit and see if we can get some chanting from the fans because this is a big part of the ball game and what a great strikeout, Steve. A strikeout that needed to be made by New Zealand. So we'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Still the two-run lead for New Zealand over Australia. More to come up on Sports Canada TV. Four-two lead for New Zealand as we go to the bottom of the six. Now pitching for Australia is the big lefty, Andrew Kirkpatrick. Josh White goes into play first on the switch as Adam Fulker now out of the game. So and Wayne Laulu coming up to the plate here as. Kirkpatrick will face the New Zealand the lineup for the first time tonight. Laulu tonight striking out and hitting into a fielder's choice. 0 for 2. Kirkpatrick, of course, one of the stories about him through his tenure as a lefty at the national stage is the long legs cut the distance between the pitching circle to the home plate area giving batters less time to react. Yeah, he's got a lot of reach down there, does Kirkpatrick. He's a very tall man and very crafty from the left side with a lot of velocity as well, though. Two and one pitch, changeup comes in. Laulu completely fooled on that one, giving a little bit of a smile. Just dropped a penny in the uh, Notre Dame machine there, change up on that call, thank you. 3-1 pitch comes in, and that's wide of the mark, and Laulu is a runner aboard on the base on balls. That'll bring up Callan Compain. Single back in the second, struck out swinging in the fourth. Looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter here, and uh, I thought he might be the first drop. Josh Har. Oh, no, he's going to run over there. Sorry, pinch runner. My apologies. He's going to run for Laulu at first base, and a uh, good, clear indication from Sorensen what he wants to do because Harbrow comes with a very quick pace and uh, anything hit through the infield, look to him go for three with ease and maybe even sneak home. 4-2 lead for New Zealand and you always want to tack some more on and we've seen leads disappear throughout this tournament. South Africa had U.S. down 3-0 into the seventh. There's a bunt nicely. Go to second base and the throw is high. Havro is safe at second. Kirkpatrick, the turn and fire and sailed it. So Campaign ends at first base. Harbro is at second. Got to say here, Steve, this is not the way that Kirkpatrick would want to come into this ball game. Uh, you know, allowing the walk firstly up to Laulu to get him on base and then turning to make that double play and skying his throw into center field. Not helping himself out here as mate. Falkard had thrown a gem for five innings and roughed up, sorry, four innings and roughed up a little in the fifth. Uh, but Kirkpatrick needs to find some of that form he's had all tournament. Tyron Botterillo stepping up to the plate. The third baseman struck out looking two, twice today. Pops it up. It's over Nick Shell's head, but to third for the force out. And that was an odd play. 
the pop-up sailed over the head of Nick Shales, but the runners had a hold because it was in the air. I tell you what, Nick Shales is one of the best players in the world. He did not panic on that. He got caught out charging too hard on the bunt attempt, but turning around, picking up that ball that went over his head and flicking it on to third, saved Australia from being in a very damaging position with loaded bases and no outs. So fielder's choice as Botterillo makes it to first. And here's Campbell Anoka will slice it out of play to the first base side. The funny thing about that is the shortstop looked to throw it to second base in behind the runner, but no one was on second because they were all shifting on the attempted bunt by Bartarello. Campbell Anoka has had a good night triple back in the fifth inning, came in to score a run as well, single back in the second. And he'll slice one down the right field line. That's going to chase home the runner from second base. And New Zealand goes up by three. Runners on the corners with one away. Oh, here we go. It's not over yet. Anoka goes. He was. Not. Oh, big play here. Big play. The second base umpire, Mike Morrissey from Canada, choosing to send Anoka back to third base. He was not on the base. You can't call time unless the player is actually physically on the base. And I'm sorry, buddy, but sometimes you've just got to slow down a bit, take a breath to try and get that right. And it's good to see Mark Sorensen this time choosing to speak to the home plate umpire with a bit of uh, coolness about him and maybe he might get an opportunity to see if he can get that overturned but uh, as you know with umpires it's a brotherhood and getting something overturned is pretty difficult but of course while they look at that play now and they negotiate it i think it's a good chance to even talk about what happened in the play steve well campbell Inoka got up to the at bat and was able to slice it down the first base line yes he did and and uh, uh campaign from second base come charging around the corner and when he slid into home plate and got up he let everyone knew how happy he was about that situation joel evans up to the dish now single back in the first score to run struck out looking in the second and popped up to the second baseman in the fifth Bartarillo at third, Campbell Anoka at first, and a foul ball will get the batter in the hole 0 and 2. Anoka with a trick uh, se uh, dummy steal there, trying to force the uh, defense into the wrong position. And uh, we see O'Byrne not taking any bar of it. He moves in to make the cutoff throw from the catcher, and the shortstop, Hod Hunter, is going to the base. So Australia looked like defensively the sound. ball on that pitch. Gotta say though Steve, I'm surprised New Zealand's not putting the foot down a little harder here and maybe you'll see um, Campbell and Oka take off here because normally they apply far more pressure in these situations. 1-2 pitch is high, make it 2-2 two and two now. Three run lead for New Zealand. They're up 4-1 to one going into the top of the inning. Australia got one back and then us. Australia is now back down three again to the first base side. That's way out of play. Maybe Sorensen's thinking here, I've got an Evans. He's a, a, a Joel Evans. He's an elite hitter. He got a good hit first at bat. I'll allow him to have a chance without throwing away an out, but obviously straight after him, the man, Nathan Nukunuku. So he wants to get him up to bat with runners on in the situation. There's a shot to the shortstop, and it's through the legs of Todd Hunter, and he throws it away. And frustration from the Australian shortstop allows the runner, Anoka, to go from second to third, and everything falling apart for Australia now, down six to two. Two errors in the innings, and James Todd Hunter wish he could have that play back again. And great to see Kirpazju just give me a tap on the bum, say, don't worry about it, buddy, park it. Let it go, it's okay. We've got to go, it's done and dusted now and we've just got to go from here. But New Zealand now jump out, six runs to two. And it's gonna be Nathan Nukunuku who had the huge double back in the fifth inning. 
to keep things rolling along for New, uh, New Zealand. Now popped up to the shortstop, and he'll be recorded as an out this time around. And that is the second out of the inning. Nathan Nukunuku did that against Japan a few days ago. He took the first pitch with a loaded bases situation and planted it over the fence. Brad Rona stepping up to the plate with two away now. Runners on the corners, and Australia trying to get out here. Down four, though, with only three outs remaining. Coming up in the seventh, unless they can tie it up. And Rona flares it to right field, and first pitch swinging, and first pitch out as Merriman hauls it in. Australia will come in from the field, but they're down. But they're down by a few. We'll go to the top of the seventh. More to come on Sports Canada TV. To the top of the seventh we go. Josh Pettit back out to work the pitching duties for New Zealand. And Australia will send their nine, one, and two hitters in O'Burn, Shales, and Todd Hunter. Yep. They sure will. New Zealand has left um, Harborough in the game. He is going to left field. And Thomas Doka has moved to center field and pushing Campbell and Doka over to right. Pettit with the delivery and shot up the middle for a base hit. And O'Byrne collects his second hit of the night. And it's not over yet, folks. Nick Shales now coming up to the plate. He has a single, one for three with two ground outs. Interesting enough, no one up in the bullpen for New Zealand at this point. So Sorensen uh, giving the ball for Pettit to complete this game. Four one differential between the two teams with the home team New Zealand shot to right field and nice catch by the fielder tagging up going to second is O'Byrne. So the runner advances, but Shales is the first out of the inning. Well, you know what, Steve, you know, maybe uh, the New Zealand public might be questioning some of the moves from Coach Sorensen in this game today, but putting Campbell Anoka at right field, he's the only player on this team that could have made that catch. Again, the hit tailing away from the fielder. Anoka actually had a stutter step. He started to cut in towards the field, the infield, and took a couple steps back and still tracked down the ball. So there's a... Pinch hitter here as Josh McGovern comes in to hit for Todd Hunter. Yeah, Josh McGovern's hitting 400 with one home run, and uh, Coach Harrow would love him to come with some of that form right here. And when Australia's only got two outs here to try and get into that podium for the first time. Oh, and one pitch by Pettit. It's quickly 0 oh and 2. Loser of this game will go face the USA tomorrow in an elimination game. The winner moves on to play Canada. And if you think tonight's match was good, wow. You throw the Canadians in the mix and it's going to be chaos. Well, I'll tell you what, Steve, this game isn't over yet. If you haven't uh, met Australians at home, they are battlers. They will not give up. They will fight tooth and nail to the very last pitch, to the very last out to see if they can get a victory here. So this game is not over. One and two count. Josh Pettit with the delivery, and that did not release where he wanted to, and it's even now. 
Kirkpatrick on deck for Australia. He's reached twice tonight, both on errors. So if Australia can get a runner here, Kirkpatrick could do some damage. But that's a big if as another foul off for the batter. At second base is O'Byrne, reached on a single and then moved to second after tagging up on the flyout from Nick Shales. Mag McGovern, the pinch hitter, now up at the plate. 2-2 pitch and rung up for strike three. And now Australia down to its last out. Kirkpatrick will be the batter. Uh, you know, this is, like I said, they won't give up here. Uh, Kirkpatrick is one of the best hitters in the team and perfect to be here. Just got a message asking, is there a speed radar gun for these pitches? But I can tell you now, the speed they're throwing at the end of this game is probably faster than when they started. Pettit will be around about 130 kilometers an hour, and uh, Folkai just sits up about 132 when he's healthy. The run at second really doesn't matter at this point. It's a four-run lead for New Zealand, so they're going to play deep and straight away trying to keep the ball in front of them. The outfield playing average depth to try to cut down anything short. Two quick balls on the tall lefty. And when you think about the speed the pitchers are throwing, you mix in the distance, and it doesn't leave a whole lot of time for the batters to react so well, it sure doesn't prove the fact it's harder to hit a softball Kirkpatrick nubs it to the pitcher and fittingly Pettit will end the game a 1-3 play and New Zealand is able to pick up the win 6-2 that will put Australia into the game against the U.S. tomorrow afternoon in a winner goes home contest and it'll be Canada, New Zealand tomorrow at 4 o'clock Pacific. So don't put your popcorn away yet. Plenty of championship ball coming up yeah, there tomorrow. Sure, there sure is, Stephen. What a fantastic game. We talked about it before the game. This would be a battle of the Titans. And a great match was played in front of us tonight. And, Steve, it was a real...